Ahoy, mateys, full speed ahead. It's me, Captain Cisco, and here's what's coming up on Gardening with Cisco. Plant flowers that are sure to attract hummingbirds to your garden. Discover why this stuff will make beautiful music in your garden. Use up your summer veggie bounty with a recipe that's all Greek to me and Tour Lake Union's houseboat garden. Ahoy! All this coming up right now on Gardening with Cisco. I'm Cisco Morris. And I'm Megan Black. Welcome to Gardening with Cisco. Oh, Megan, I'm so excited. I can tell. We're going to jump aboard the MV Allure and we're going to go out on a houseboat garden tour. Wow, you know, I can't imagine what kind of gardens they have on houseboats, but I am certainly looking forward to finding that, particularly waterside. This should be a fun show. But before we do that, you know, my yard is filled with hummingbirds. Love them, and here's the plants you need to get them too. So I have this cheap old hummingbird feeder, and I gotta tell you, I've got a $75 gorgeous, beautiful glass hummingbird feeder. Which one do you think the hummingbirds go to? I can to? already guess. They, I put them both out, and they love this cheesy little Isn't thing that, that is funny? like, come on, this is like having pink flamingos in your yard. Uh, this is gorgeous and sophisticated. The hummingbirds <laughs> love this guy. So what's up? People are asking, first of all, I got chastised because I had the red stuff in there. Yeah. And Cisco goes, we're not using that. I'm like, why not? Uh, well, a lot of people think that the food color is not good for hummingbirds. Well, it's not good for us, so I imagine it's not good for them either. So it's <laughs> one part sugar to three parts four water. Four parts water. Four parts water. Yep. Um, and you just dissolve it and boom. You yeah. hang it out there and there you go. But one other thing, when you wash these out, you want to change them really a lot because you never want fungus or bacteria right. get in there and when you wash them out uh, you just use boiling water or uh, you can use bleach or vinegar but never, never soap, soap. Okay. yeah because they hate soap I mean birds hate soap. so fancy pants what's your idea <laughs> let's plant some plants and I like that idea. Birds. it's easier so Megan, these are the only kind of feeders you need oh, right here. Oh, hummingbird yeah. plants, yeah. you bet. Yeah, hummingbird plants. So this is a salvia. This is really the main Salvia state. hot lips. Hot lips. They cannot leave this alone. When you try and take a cutting to show it a garden talk or something, they'll just start dive Isn't bobbing you, you know. And then look at those delphinium. They like delphinium? They love delphinium. The real trick is never let them dry out. So we've got tons of compost in here. You yes. want that? These are really root bound. And then... Uh, it's kind of late in the season. Yeah, it is late in the season, but they'll bounce right out of this. If they ever dry out, you'll lose them, but if you keep the soil moist, then they'll just keep coming back. They'll die back soon now, Megan. Uh-huh. And after they do, what'll happen is new leaves will come up and they'll just grow back up. You'll get another bloom this year. Some years I get three blooms. Really? Yeah, but that then you got to really keep them well fertilized and well watered to get that. Like okay, him. Okay, I'm going to get this hot lips. You know, it's so funny because everywhere I go, I see in nurseries, yeah. I see signs saying Cisco's favorite plant. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it is. is. Oh, I love this. All right. So, yeah, this, this guy will. And this is going to Ooh, double in size at least, I Megan. I love it. So, and get really thick. They're just magnificent And then to have plants. those blue delphiniums coming behind oh, him. Oh, yeah. And those delphiniums, wow. as they get older, they'll get way taller. So it'll be really perfect. Plus, you'll be cutting that hot lips down in the spring, and that'll work perfect, you know. Okay. Oh, oh, smell that, Megan. Little dianthus. Oh, nice yeah, job. Yeah, what a nice little dianthus. So, you know what? One thing I do know about hummingbirds is they will remember year to year exactly which plants have nectar, and not only that, when they will have nectar again after they suck Isn't them dry. Isn't that unbelievable? Amazing birds, and they're so much fun to watch. So. Truly, the plants are the way to go. Yep. Hummingbirds are a lot like me. They have the biggest brain of ah! any bird. <laughs> yeah, and they're about that hyper, too. I don't know. You, may, you be, may be a little more hyper than they are. Be true. I have to admit it. Get yourself some hummingbird plants. So if you're going to hang up a hummingbird feeder, 
You want to get one with purchase. Those little guys worked their little hinders off trying to get a bite to eat. That's probably what was wrong with the expensive one. It was just too darn fancy to have a step ladder for them. <laughs> Welcome back to Garden with Cisco. We're on one of the most unique tours you could do in Seattle. Mm -hmm. A houseboat garden tour with Cedar Wave Tours. Lots of color going on, some great potted plants. Now we're going to get to that in just a second, but you know there's much more to do in your yard other than composting and fertilizing, particularly if you want to <clears throat> strike the right note with your plants. We're going to talk about the best product that you don't know about and your garden wishes you did. The plants on the right of your screen benefited from the latest trend in organic gardening, adding Humate, in this case, Humagic. Humagic is what we call a living humate, and people confuse it with compost. So first off, it's not compost, and don't use it like compost. What is Humate? Think of it as a conductor. I think of the soil as an orchestra. And in that orchestra, you've got organic matter and minerals and microbes and air and water and all the components that you have in the soil. But what you're missing is this mysterious thing, this humate. And that's the conductor of the symphony. And what that conductor does is pull together all of these components and creates the symphony. Now you know what humate does. Here is how to use it. This is the Humagic granular. This is what it looks like fresh, unprocessed, granular product that you apply in the same quantity that you would as your fertilizer, but it's not a fertilizer. It's a conductor that helps your fertilizer. It's not a compost, it's a conductor that helps your compost. And you spread it out on the drip line and under the plant material and let it do its thing. Very easy to apply. Faster growers like veggies love Humagic Liquid. Set a hose end sprayer at two ounces per gallon and drench your soil every two weeks. Just as a conductor creates a symphony of harmonious music, he also is there to fix the dissonance, the discords in a group. So when you have discord in your soil, the clay particles that don't help with the water or the, the toxins, the heavy metals, your humates. Your living Humagic will help hold up the toxins and it will help break up clay particles. So the conductor is fixing the orchestra at the same time that he's creating beautiful music for the soil. So Humates, like Humagic, help all the elements in your soil make beautiful music together. And you see the results when you add this conductor to all the musicians. And that's the magic. Okay, Cisco, I do have a bone to pick with you, my friend. You Ooh, know that enough. fancy variegated maple you had me buy? Yeah. It's going green. Oh, I can solve that problem. Let me at it! So I was looking out my dining room window and I noticed these big dark green leaves. This is a butterfly maple. It's variegated yeah. leaves. Well, you know how they get these trees? They're no. from mutations. So oh. somebody has a tree with green leaves just like this, yeah, and they come out and there's a branch with leaves like this, they go, I'm going to be a millionaire. Oh, <laughs> and then they clone them. They take cuttings, yeah, to I clone see. them. And so uh, trees that mutate, cells right. that mutate, they mutate back real easy. Oh, so you have to be out here, yep. and I'm guessing you just need to take those off, right? Yeah, right back to where it came oh, off the main branch. So I need to take the whole thing. That's right. Oh, look at and that. See if, and, and look at that, Megan. Look at the size of those leaves. Way They're bigger. They're full of chlorophyll. They make food fast. Right. They're going to make food so much faster than these guys, it'll take over your whole tree. Oh, so we do need to search throughout yeah, this baby to find yeah. out if there Is are... One oh, up there's there? one. So what about this guy? He seems to be sticking out a little bit yeah. if we took him off down well, here. You know what? If we cut down there, I'm not sure we'll get any new growth. Okay. But up here, Megan, I bet we'd get a nice bunch and of growth. And then it might fill in this kind of empty area. Yeah. So, so I let think me it's find, worth Oh, here's a, a spot where they're both coming out. Yeah, Is that yeah, a good that spot? Yeah, that would be perfect. Okay. And then Great. maybe he'll fill in a I'm little bit right there. I'm hoping that'll fill yeah. in right there because we do have that little empty gap. That sometimes just happens. There's some little know? dead pieces in oh, here, yeah, too. Oh, yeah. Good to get those out while we're at it, too. Yeah. 
Because we know they're not going to do anything. So it's just a youngster. It's kind of right. a teenager just starting to ah. get its shape, you know. Oh, so. to be that young again. Yeah. Oh boy, a little gangly, huh? <laughs> yes, uh. yes. I like him because he's got personality. Yeah, yeah. And he's unique. <laughs> this, in other words, it's a Charlie Brown Japanese maple, you know. <laughs> so really, all I need to do is watch out and make sure that it doesn't revert. That's and right. then clean up any errant ones. Yeah. And other than that, they're pretty easy. Yeah, and I think as the years go by, it'll get prettier, prettier. Uh-oh, I see one more Megan back here. Don't you say it's not pretty. <laughs> oh, I think in its own little gangly way, it's very pretty. <laughs> So basically, it's a never-ending battle. <laughs> this is it all gardening? True. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from our houseboat garden tour on Cedar Wave. Hey, look at that house right there. Yeah? Sleepless in Seattle. No! That is the house. You're look at that. Me. Absolutely adorable. Wave oh, the guy. Hey there. Fun. How's it going? Oh, man. I remember seeing it on the movie. I know. And they fixed oh. up all these houses with all these decks and the beautiful little gardens. Patio gardening. Oh. I love it. Well, you know, speaking of gardening, yes. it's time to harvest all those great vegetables. I know. Particularly tomatoes. And our friend Chef Lynn Villa has a Greek flair to this one. here today feeling like maybe a Mediterranean cruise felt good. Can you help me out with that? I think I can. Yeah, yeah okay. Let's make some gyros. What uh, do you say? The next best thing. Yeah. Greek food. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You know, um, I walk into the produce department this time of year, and it's impossible to decide what to pick. Isn't it, though? It's that time of year. And the gardens, too. Your yeah. gardens are just like this bounty of everything. Yeah, so I decided on a dish where we're going to use a little bit of almost everything. I love it. Okay, so I let's start out with it. our tzatziki sauce. Tzatziki. Okay. Yes. Love it. Mm -hmm. And so what I do, a little trick that I like to do, I use the cucumbers. I also like to use radishes in mine. Oh. But I salt them a little bit and okay. let them kind of uh, soften, and then it gives them a nice texture. Okay, okay. so go for it. So okay. Little Greek yogurt Greek, here. Gotta have that. Yeah, Greek I like yogurt. the good thick stuff. Okay, Isn't good. that just beautiful? Nice. Okay. And then you can just start oh, adding your garnish there. Yep. Get those babies out. Oh, I like that salt idea. I've never thought about that. And you know, it, it also it draws the flavor, but it also gives them the, uh, like the texture that uh -huh. it gives them too. Yeah. And then I throw oh, a few capers in there. Darn. You know? Little tart my capers, flavor, a little yeah, salty I know. as well. I know all your Mediterranean some, things you love it, ooh, and fresh dill, dill, and a little garlic. <laughs> so simple. A little garlic, don't you well, like that? Okay. Just a little. A little garlic. A little garlic. Okay. I'm not going to put any garlic in the garnish for it, so this is going right. to be the, the garlic well, that's a sauce. Yeah. Fair amount of Yeah. So that's step yogurt. one. This you can make a couple of days ahead of time. It's just throw in the better. fridge. Yeah, exactly. You can make it a little bit yeah. ahead of time. Because then it marinates a little yeah. further. And then we're going to make our nice topping. And show all these gorgeous colors. Okay, you know, that itself is very pretty. Isn't that pretty? Okay. All right. So the dressing's ready now for the main part? Yes, yeah, so we're going to make like the salad that could either go on the side or uh, right on top of our gyro, awesome. whichever you prefer. Okay, I know, so I I'm, I'm okay. loving this already. I know. Are you and your Ooh, feta? Oh, little feta yeah. salad. Yeah. So we'll save that to sprinkle on the top. Perfect. All Sounds right. good. All right. So oh, baby. The you, star of the show. We have had so much heat this summer ah. already. The tomatoes are... Candy. Yes, yeah. without a doubt. So these are organic heirloom tomatoes, and we... We carry so many beautiful there varieties. Nothing yeah. better. Come and check it out. Nothing it's better than that. It's that time of year. Yep. And okay. Then, ooh, little dill. Fresh dill. More dill. Fresh mint. Oh, now I we're love getting my those mint aromatics too. Yeah. in there. Yeah. Oh, well, kalamatas. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Little pitted yeah. kalamatas. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for pitting me. And you know, when I, <laughs> I spent hours on that. <laughs> Anytime I add. Get serious, will you? Okay, sorry. Anytime I add um, kalamatas to a salad, I, I go a low, a light on the salt because uh, they're such a salty yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Okay, okay. so, so then we have next, some red onion. Yeah. And I like to, I don't like a ton of onion in this, no, so I, I slice it really good. thinly. And then a little bit goes a long way. And, then, the, and then some cubes. And you know, um, along those lines, anytime I'm Red doing pepper. a cut for something that I'm going to be using as a garnish, perhaps, right. I, I cut everything in relatively thin slices. Sure, and instead you, of you giant do it chunks. Cute on yeah. the diagonal, too. Toss that up a little okay. bit. Yeah, you know, we're all about pretty, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, are we, though? Pretty. So now this all gets pulled together with some uh, extra virgin olive oil. So okay. I'm just going to drizzle that Go on for there it. for you. Look at those colors. Isn't that I know, just isn't amazing? that beautiful? Yeah. And then a splash of any kind of vinegar you like. Oh, sherry wine vinegar is what I'm using. Okay. Um, or you could use lemon juice. 
Oh, yeah. Something with some nice acidity. Okay. And then a little pinch of salt. And then, like I said, I'm going to go light. And then, you know, we'll taste. And um, some cracked black pepper. That is beautiful. Healthy. Fabulous. All right, so let's put it together, I shall think we? we shall. Okay, I'll meet you back here. And just like that, beauty mess. <laughs> Voila. I love it. Yeah. So what do you put in there? A little, um, a little lamb, yeah. A little seasoned lamb, lamb patty on nice. a skewer. Yeah. So, oh, hummus. Hummus. So you can put dress it with hummus. Hummus, some caprancini, a little lemon. You can just have your Greek salad yeah. or you can have a little. This is what yeah. summer is all about. No doubt. Well, yeah. rather okay, than you go pick up this big thing and <laughs> eat a piece of pork. <laughs> okay. And you all appreciate that oh, too, brother. don't you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're going for the tomato? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Oh. I can taste it just watching her. The mint, yeah. the dill. Yeah. Oh, baby. Now that is, I mean, what a beautiful way to use everything that's fresh right now. Exactly. And so healthy. And so healthy. Yeah. I mean, here's okay. good. Mm -hmm. Vegan, check out that cool <laughs> swan. I want to ride your, that. Your kind of cool toy. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Welcome back to Garden with Cisco. Do you believe all the plants there are on all I these know. houseboats? Absolutely beautiful. And the good thing is, one of our plant picks this week, perfect for a container just like that. Anytime I go to the nursery and there's a big old sign that says new, I am a sucker <laughs> for it. <laughs> you and me both, oh man. So especially something as cute as this. We love our little cypresses. Yeah. And this guy, I read, he gets up to eight feet tall. The problem is he doesn't get there until he's about 10 yeah, years that's old. That's going to be very slow going. And he can live 80 years. Wow. I know, but isn't he? He gets great fall color, gets yeah. all golden and brown in the yeah. winter. Mm, fall. So do you wonder why they call it a bald cypress? Yeah. Because it will be bald all winter long. It drops it's all its situation. leaves, you yeah. know. But they so, get great fall color and they look really, really great when they get the new leaves in the spring. It's a, is it a peeve minaret or what are you, what do you say? A peve minaret, I a think. Peve but I'm minaret. guessing really, you know. Um, but. Isn't it cute though? I love the leaves. Oh, so yeah. I have it in a corner and it likes sun. Are it you, likes sun. That's right. They love sun. So I have it in a corner here, which I figure, you know, over 80 years, if I'm still around <laughs> to see it, <laughs> it full grown, I've got more things to worry Ooh. about than that plant. Now watch. This will probably be 120 feet tall in three months, you know. But uh, Okay. Let me dig. You, okay. uh, oh, well, let's talk about um, fertilizer for this baby. What yeah, kind these of stuff? bald cypresses, they really like acid soil oh good which is great because he's next to a blue right. hydrangea we're trying to keep that one blue so we're adding uh acid things so uh all right out you come little so that means i grab heavy. both kinds of fertilizers there the regular oh, okay. and we have these ones for acidic so i'm guessing we're going to use that yeah we'll use the acidic fertilizer and that'll be great so if it's too alkaline i guess it gets all yellow that's right because it can't pick up the nutrients it needs okay so uh it's really important to use an organic Rhododendron food if you're going to plant this so great bald So how cypress. often do I uh, fertilize him? Once a year? Once yeah, once a year. Okay. And you know what? If you see it ever start to turn yellow, give him a little get extra. that fertilizer out right away. Yeah. Not a whole lot of roots to him. Oh, look at that. Now, this oh, is definitely see. I one. Make sure. I oh, think the no. other way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There Just like that. Isn't go. it cute? I'm oh, so excited. It's really a cutie. And it's so fun. To plant a conifer that drops its leaves. Yes. It throws everybody for a loop, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps you guessing. And I guess the bark turns red. Oh, and so yeah. it adds a little extra interest to it oh, as it gets man, older. You, you really found a good one there. So bald cypress. It's and a peve minaret. If peve you want minaret. It. Or peeve minaret, <laughs> if you like my American <laughs> version. So uh, it's a great new plant. Find it in the nurseries now. I am very excited. Yeah, that. boy, we just got a water nap baby in it. Is it going to be beautiful here? And of course, today we are all about this lovely waterside garden tour from the houseboat. Captain Dave from Cedar Wave is here now. This is so much fun. How yeah. did you guys come up with this tour idea? Tell me about it. Well, it just people love to see the lake, and uh, there's a lot out here. Wow, these are pretty incredible, aren't they? What do people see? What do they look for when they come out here? Well, I mean, a lot of the houseboats, they started around the turn of the century, so there's a lot of history. Most of these houseboats are built on the original cedar logs that were here around 1900 or so. 
every one of them is different. They're uh, quite unique. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I think, you know, we need to get this boat moving again, right? Yeah, <laughs> we got to get somewhere. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take a tour. It's really fun. Have a great weekend. Thank you.